Okay, we're going to go over the uh, configuration and setup for a terminal. Um, now, once you've actually configured your terminal um, in the beginning, which we already have a video on that that actually shows you how to actually set your IP address and whatnot for your ACP enabled Thin client. Um, now, inside of Thin Manager, what we're actually going to do is look at the actual terminal settings and configurations themselves. Um, First thing I could do if I didn't already have one of these selected here that I could use, I could easily go up to terminals and just say add terminal and it would bring up a configuration just like this. But what I'm going to do is actually walk you through an existing terminal that we already have. Um, and I've got this one over here called operator. I'm going to click on modify and you'll see the same settings. Now I've already given it a name and it's called operator here. All right. Um, I've got the ability to change the group. If I wanted it to be a part of a particular group, I could click on that. I also have the ability to copy settings from another terminal. If I wanted it to be similar to another terminal I already had in my environment, I could easily do that as well. If there are any permissives that I want to add, I can easily do that in this field here. I just click on that permissives button and that gives me the ability to actually change any permissives that I need. We click on the next screen and this gives us the terminal hardware configuration. If you notice here, it shows that it's an Arista Box PC 238D. Um, gives me the OEM and chipset uh, for the video and whatnot. And then also gives me my terminal ID. Now, this is based off of uh, the actual MAC address. Um, so this is uh, basically assigned to that. So if I ever wanted to remove this, I could easily do that and actually have a, a different terminal in place. Um, the next thing we go to is uh, a little box here under our terminal options that says uh, terminal replacement. This is a, if we want to allow replacement. If for some reason that terminal goes offline, let's say uh, it hits by a forklift or uh, something catastrophic happens and that terminal dies. This allows you to easily replace that terminal if it comes offline. Um, the next thing we can do here is we can actually set a schedule. Now what does that mean? If we set a schedule, if I click on that box right there and click on schedule, I can actually add uh, certain events to that, such as do I want to disable the terminal, do I want to enable the terminal, reboot the terminal, or reset the terminal sessions. Uh, even calibrate the touch screen. I can actually have these things pop up um, at any kind of interval that I want, be it daily, weekly, monthly, those kind of things. So the schedule is there for your use if you need to as well. The other thing we want to talk about and point out is shadowing. We have the ability here to actually shadow this particular terminal from another uh, environment, such as a thin client or inside of the manager. And I can actually click on here and say, okay, I want it to be no, ask, warn, or yes. I'm going to leave it on yes for this. And then do I want it to be allowed to be interactive as far as shadowing is concerned? Now that's important because you may want somebody to be able to shadow, but you may not want them to make any changes to what's going on. So you may not want that checked. Like I say, for what I'm going to do here, I'm going to leave that checked right now. Um, next thing we come to is the terminal mode selection. Um, I'm going to enable the ability to use display clients and term secure. Now right now this is a box PC 238D. It does have the ability to be a multi-monitor capable uh, unit. Um, however, right now I'm running it in a single monitor mode. That's why that box right there is not checked. Now, if you had a terminal that was not a multi-monitor capable terminal, this area right here would not even show up in your display area whatsoever as far as your terminal mode selections. Click on next and now we come to the display client selection. It's pretty straightforward. Anything that is the available display clients that are over here on my left hand side, I can select them to show up on the right hand side as far as the selected display clients. Right now I've got desktop on my primary selected and I can just continue to move forward from there. I have a few other interface options available for me. Uh, I can show the selector on the terminal and I've got certain selector options. Um, I can also enable uh, tiling, I can enable uh, different screen edge display uh, client selection. So what that means is if I move the, the cursor of the mouse over to one side or the other, it would actually uh, give me that other display client that I needed. Now with Term Secure enabled, um, it, it gives me these main menu options. If I did not have Term Secure enabled, I would not see this area right here. But if I click on that, then it gives me a few other options. Do I allow reboot or restart? Do I want to show the main menu on the selector? And do I want to show a virtual keyboard? So if you were using Term Secure and you had a touch screen, you would want to be able to probably put that show virtual keyboard uh, actually have that checked right there so that you would actually have that pop up on your screen on your touch screen. Uh, the next screen we go to is the terminal hotkeys. Um, I've got a couple of hotkeys already assigned um, such as control page up and control page down and then I've got certain main menu hotkeys assigned so, such as control M um, and then we can move forward from there. This is where I put in my Windows username and password. Right now I've got it selected as term one uh, and then uh, password. Now if this is a part of a domain I would put those credentials in right there. 
the next screen we come to is the video resolution. Okay, and I'm going to select uh, 1024 by 768. We've got our color depth there and refresh rate. We'll leave those as they are. Um, here are some certain modules that I can have installed. I've got a prox card reader I can have installed, USB flash drive module, just a number of different modules. We have tons of modules available for you. Everything from touchscreen uh, drivers to uh, if you wanted to see if you wanted to have an ELO touchscreen driver and you need to select that, you could do that. Or if it's certain mouse functions, let's go back over to your mouse sections. Let's say you had um, a mouse configuration that you wanted to have set up or it was PS2 mouse configuration. I can click on that and when I come to that, if I click on these, you'll see I've got a few other options. I've got the scroll mouse capability. I can click on yes to that scroll wheel that you may have on your mouse versus one that doesn't have a scroll wheel. If I do have the scroll wheel, I can actually enable that. These are plenty of features. Like I said, we have tons of different modules and features and drivers available for you to make the most use out of your thin client. Um, the next screen we come to is server monitor list. Don't have anything in there. For right now, we're not doing any kind of monitoring and load balancing, so I'm going to leave those as they are, and then click on finish. Now, once I've done that, I've actually configured my actual thin client. So now if I actually go inside of thin manager, I will be able to shadow what's going on and when I shadow that, you can see I've got desktop on my primary available for me inside of Thin Manager, which is exactly what I said I wanted it to be. If you look over here to the operator terminal, you're going to see that desktop on my primary is actually loaded from the my primary terminal server on the operator terminal. So that's how easy it is to actually configure a Thin Client inside of Thin Manager.